Today on the channel, things are looking a little bit evil with the King of Darkness, Evil, from Super 7, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Series 2. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another New Japan Pro Wrestling Series 2 unboxing and review via Super 7. And today, we're looking at evil. But for all your Super 7 needs, hit up Big Bad Toy Store, link in the description below. And I can't stress it enough, whenever I order my Super 7 figures, I always go through Big Bad Toy Store, as you do not pay till they ship. As we know, you're looking at 12 to 14 months, even longer sometimes from Super 7, so get the most out of your money, go with Big Bad Toy Store, link in the description below. So there you go. But here we are, New Japan Pro Wrestling Series 2. I didn't think we'd ever see this series, actually. Uh, long delayed, we weren't sure about updates and everything, and then bam, here they are. And I don't know, there's been no announcement of a Series 3 as of yet. I'm not going to hold my breath for that. It sounds like New Japan's pretty hard to work with. There's been issues, all kinds of stuff. So I think we'll just kind of wait and see how this all ends up shaking out in the New Japan Pro Wrestling Department. But I got to think somebody else would pick up the license if Super 7 did bow out. I don't know. That's the figure game out there. So stay tuned for that. But today, we're looking at evil, like I said. And as we know, we're going to do this like we do all the other unboxings on the channel, Super 7 or not. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We'll do some comparisons. We'll see where it goes from there. How about it? How about it? There you go. But as we know, they all come with this nice brown cardboard shipping container here. So you got evil right there. Uh, the old king of sports. King of sports, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Gotta love sports. Oh, love sports. You know, whenever I used to meet Harley Race all the time, he was always up here in the Midwest. See him all the time. He would always put on his autograph, to Kyle, best in sports. King of sports, that is. But he loved the old best in sports. It was the Harley tagline. I still joke about it to this day. Harley Race, there'll never be another guy like him. That is for sure. Then you get down to it. You get down to the New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, Super 7 packaging. Very familiar to you Super 7 fans out there as they all come with this nice slip case, all uniform packaging, stuff like that. It always looks very, very good here. You got the same King of Sports logo, just a lot more fancy on this. On the back, New Japan. There it is, Pro Wrestling, King of Sports. On the top, you got Super 7 Ultimates, UPCs, warnings, things like that. But where the real magic happens is in the old slip case, as you guys know. You pull that bad boy off. Gently put that to the side, see you later, and then you get the packaging. Now, oh, Super 7 has more wrestling figures coming out outside of the New Japan figures. We got Matt and Brian from the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, of course. Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. Those both should be here January-ish, maybe February, who knows. Uh, but one thing they will be unified in is the packaging with kind of the ring ropes packaging going on there. So package uniformity is a big thing. Super 7, I do appreciate how between all their lines, we can be talking Thundercats, you can be talking Transformers, G.I. Joe, uh, the list goes on and on. They have the same packaging, same kind of design, and so forth. So that is pretty neat out there. But then you got Evil here, the King of Darkness. Now he's the King of Darkness. Now we all know who the Prince of Darkness is, and that's Ozzy Osbourne. So Evil taking it one extra step from Ozzy. Uh, I don't know what he does. Does he eat the heads off of um, flamingos? I don't know. Ozzy does bats in my hometown, of course. Ozzy bit the head off the bat. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know if Evil's biting the heads off of uh, flamingos. Who knows? But I do know, I believe he's dating or married to Io Shirai. Fun fact right there. NXT superstar Io Shirai. And probably one of the greatest wrestling female figures of all time, of course, in the Mattel Elite line back in the day. But you can see Evil there. We're going to dissect it. We're going to see what's going on inside there. Nothing too fun anywhere. New Japan on the top. On the back, King of Darkness. There it is. It's got a little bit of a tail of tape there. I'm going to read that. See what it says about him here. King of Darkness, Evil. Height 5'10", 234 pounds. From unknown. And not quite parts unknown. Just unknown. Very close. Uh, but down the road a bit. Down the road a bit. His finisher is just straight up Evil. And his Twitter, 151012evil. There you go. Very, very interesting Twitter handle for him. Uh, good for him. Good for him getting on Twitter, interacting with his fans. And the first time I remember Evil was uh, Ring of Honor. He came to Ring of Honor. I'd heard the name. Like, I'd heard of so many Japanese superstars. And I got to be honest, I am by no means a New Japan Pro Wrestling expert. I can talk New Japan Pro Wrestling from the 80s and 90s a lot better than I can current day. 
just is the way things go. But, you know, Apner Magazine's out there. Obviously, New Japan and WCW had a pretty good relationship back in the day, trading talent back and forth. So you were a lot more familiar back in those days, at least I was. Now, of course, they come over to Ring of Honor, Impact, every once in a while you get some of those guys. But I'm not into the trenches, and especially, like, All Japan was my favorite. All I was an All Japan guy. There's, you, you seem to be a New Japan or All Japan I was all in on the All Japan superstars. They had a lot of guys I knew, of course, like Dr. Death over there, Vader, Johnny Ace, and uh, so forth. But this isn't a New Japan, All Japan pro wrestling history. This is an action figure review. So I'm setting the stage. But let's bust out Evil out of the package here. Let's see how evil things begin. When I open this box, is like Spirit's going to come out of the box like the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo? You never know. Stay tuned. It could happen. Vincent Price. I was there as a small boy watching that. There's the old background. I like the lights back there. Kind of a little stage going on. Very cool. Very cool. Off to the side. A little see you later action. And then we get down to the old plastic prison. And oh, that's when things really start picking up. And this is when Kyle's really going to have to do some uh, cutting, apparently. Because there's a lot to unpack here. But there he is in the plastic prison. Big robe going on there. We got one extra head. I did not realize. And that's the thing about these Super 7 figures. We pre-order them. They come 14 months later. You forget what you pre-ordered. I forgot he had this big sickle going on here. That is pretty solid. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five sets of hands plus a set on him. That's six sets of hands out there. If you like hands, you came to the right place. Unless you like, oh, whew, I was going to say unless you like fisted hands because he doesn't have any. But luckily the fisted hands are on him. So I do like that a whole lot. So there is evil in the plastic prison. Let me get him out of the package and we'll see what all the evil is about. All right, we're out of the package. We're ready to rock and roll into this review here. And of course, you got to save the packaging on these. I always say on Super 7, uh, use the parts you don't want. Put them back in the box. Put the box, put this back in the box. Put this in the cardboard box. Save your packaging as Super 7 figures are always more valuable when you keep the packaging. It's nice, beautiful packaging. Uh, save it all. That's my recommendation there. That's the hot recommendation. And All right, we got Evil right here. Beautiful robe going on. We'll get to him in a second here. Let's talk about some of these accessories first. And the first thing I want to talk about is this sickle. This big old sickle, which he obviously carries to the ring. It's got a little chain action to it with a nice cross going on. It is an upside down cross. So evil representing the devil right here. Just representing got his upside down crosses. He probably learned that from a young Ozzy Osbourne on the Diary of the Madman. Uh, CD, LP, record, whatever you want to call it back in the day. This almost looks like a dinosaur type head or like some kind of crane bird. Almost looks like there's a little eye with a long beak here. Nice spikes up there. Really nice detail in this thing, but I wish there was some extra color. It's just all one color. It's all gray, and I think that takes away a lot of the specialness that this could have. I think if there were some picture highlights or some color highlights going on here, it would really make this thing pop. So if I was more artistic out there... Maybe I would do that, but he does have this for his entrance if you want to have that going on. You got that. Oh, he's got a mask too. So like I said, I'm not the most familiar with all these characters. These things don't jump out at me, especially, but he does have this face mask going on with all the spikes and stuff. You put his, pop his head off as we know, Super 7, all the figures heads pop off. You put this in, put the head back on. He's got a nice face mask and we'll have nice glamour shots throughout the video uh, demonstrating all this stuff, of course. Then you get to down to all the hands here, and, and basically they got a little bit of everything you could want in the hands. I don't think I need to go through and say what kind of hands we got. We got the flat hands, you got the two fist, you got the hand holding C gripping hands, uh, you got kind of the evil hands, no pun intended, but you got the evil Drew McIntyre hands or the heavy metal hands as I always like to call them. Uh, and then you got the finger pointing hands, so you can do one of those or one of those if you need to to somebody. Always appreciate a finger pointing hands. Hey, buy the shirt, the point. Kyle Peterson, search it, prowrestlingtees.com. Then you get an extra head here. So let's look at both these heads. I don't know. Now, Super 7, now, now I got to get down to it here. And I've had these comments with New Japan Series 1. The heads are always the roughest part of the Super 7 figures. Now, I'm not just talking about wrestling figures, all figures. Sometimes they lose me in the head department. And where they lose me the most is when you're trying to duplicate a human's physical features. Super 7 does an amazing job when they did the He-Man figures back in the day. Uh, even King Diamond and Ghost, uh, Papa, of course, Emeritus 1... Those are great because there's face paint to them and stuff. Those look awesome. They look amazing. Uh, you know, Thundercats, like I said. And uh, we've had a lot of good Super 7 figures. But then when they try to do humans, something is lost. And these really do look like FTC style heads to me. I know a lot of people do not like FTC heads out there. They have that kind of gloss shine to them. I don't know if they need to be dulled down or what. 
but that is one thing I've seen consistently from Super 7 over the years, and uh, we see it here too. It's just a little bit, for the price point, I feel like they should at least equal the Mattel or Jazzwares type head sculpts where I mean, you got complaints on those too. So nobody is lack or shy of complaints out there. But I do think these just have an extra gloss to them that makes them look not as realistic as they could. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but that's my thoughts seeing Super 7 human figures. And we're not just talking wrestling. We're talking like Power Rangers. You see the still images of some of the non-helmeted Power Ranger figures? You see that same thing out there. So I want to make sure I, I talked about that. But both head sculpts have the nice purple wave through the hair. Uh, you got the blue in the hair as well. He's got his beard going on. He's got uh, the makeup going on underneath his eyes, of course. I mean, they're very similar. One is an open mouth face. One is a stoic face. So there you go, depending which head you want going on there. But then you get down to the old brass tacks here, and we got uh, evil, looking only like a, an evil guy would look. Like he's a young Ozzy Osbourne, but apparently he's the king of evil. And I should have known with that upside down cross, because he's representing it right on his shirt there. You know, he's letting everybody know he worships Satan at the end of the day. Uh, Hail Satan is what he's saying all day long, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if uh, that's a good look for you or not. That might be trouble in the long run. I don't know. I'm not judging. Not judging, but that might be trouble for him. Uh, but how does this remove? So it's got an interesting robe. This is one of the most delicate soft good robes, robes or intricate soft good robes I've seen in a long time. Uh, it's a beautiful robe. Very A lot of different colors to it. A lot going on. I'm just trying to figure out how the heck do I even get this off. Okay, here we go. I think I figured it out. So you got to bend an arm. Uh-oh, we got issues right off the bat here. Let's, let me get this off before we get too far into it. Is this Velcro on the side? Okay, we got some Velcro going on on the side here. Holy cow, this is a very intricate robe. I'm not even... One of the most intricate robes I've seen in many, many years between many, many toy lines. Now, how do I get this? I probably just pop his head off. We're going to figure this out together, guys. We're a team. We're a team right here. So let me pop this back on. There it is. Uh, okay, so... I don't know, guys. I don't know. These are very pricey figures, and I feel like there is some issues here. First issue is the staining on the bicep. So we're getting staining with the soft goods on here. That is always unfortunate. We don't settle it for it for Jazzwares or Mattel, and we're not going to settle for it with Super 7. So I'm very disappointed in that. We got one arm that's backwards. Okay, let me get that fixed. Got to get them straightened out here. And I tell you what... To me, this figure isn't the greatest figure in the world, especially without the robe. You put this robe on, you're kind of dressing it up. You're kind of making it look magical. It looks something on there. But outside of that, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It loses me a little bit, unfortunately. Staining on the bicep really hurts this figure, obviously. Uh, we do have a knee, an elbow pad here. We got two knee pads, but as we know as Super 7, the knee pad uh, covers over. It's a very interesting knee pad on these. I do like that, though. I like their knee pad technology. It's a thing now. Uh, good coloring on his singlet. His uh, singlet going on here with kind of a thunderous uh, cracker, kind of cracked rock look. I don't know, lightning. I don't know what exactly it's supposed to be. And he does have writing on the side of his singlet, but I cannot in a million years tell you what that says. Oh, I got more staining over here too. Jeez. And that's not going to come off. It's it's unfortunately stained the plastic out there. So I don't know. For me, though, he's going to be having his coat and his uh, hood and all that stuff on all the time. So I'm I'm okay. I'm not okay with it. I'm not going to say I'm okay with the staining. I guess I won't notice it. I won't see it. But I'm guessing if mine is stained, everybody's is probably stained, unfortunately. Uh, then you get down to the hands. Uh, we'll go through articulation. The hands are removable, of course, but the hands move every single direction you could ever want. Single jointed elbows going on there. You do have a bicep swivel. A little bit loose in the bicep swivel, unfortunately. Big shoulder joints on ratchets go all around, do all the shoulder movement you would ever want. Big ab crunch on him. Goes more back than forward, though, which is always interesting. The head is removable. Okay, and then you got the waist uh, that moves side to side, of course. You got the leg articulation. He can do the splits. He goes all out. Very similar to Super 7 articulation. I mean, they've, they're doing this across the board. Uh, no thigh swivel here. You do got the knees that bend. They are not double jointed. We do got some staining over by the knees as well, unfortunately. And then he's got the uh, ankle boots on, which are always interesting. Nice purple, silver, and black attire going on here. It's very evil. If there was a word for it, it would be evil. 
Uh, and like I said, we already talked about the head sculpt. I thought they were okay. The hair is okay, but the face lose me a little, little bit plain here. And then the the fists and on here seem a little bit small. They don't feel like they match the body totally. I uh, gotta be honest here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to totally think. I. It's not the home run I was hoping it would be. Definitely looks better in his uh, pre-match regalia, his garb here. I think that's where he's going to stay for me, dressed up like that. Uh, does he fit on a ringside collectible stand? I'm sure he does. Oh, he does. As I always say, spend your money on your figures, not your stands. Ringsidecollectibles.com. Use discount code KYLE. So he fits fine on there. I don't know. I just... I, I would hate to see Super 7 get out of wrestling figures, but I'd be okay if they got out of wrestling figures. Uh, I'm a sucker for wrestling figures. I'm going to buy everybody, most likely. You guys know how I am. You've followed the channel long enough. But I feel like Super 7's strengths are in heavy metal stuff with the reaction figures, King Diamond, Papa, uh, things like Super 7 Thundercats, the Power Rangers, G.I. Joe, Transformers. Some of the other properties I think they do a better justice to. Ninja Turtles, for example... I feel like they just got a lot of kinks to work out in their wrestling figure lines. And next up, I'll probably get the Matt and Brian figures and then uh, Doc Gallows and uh, Carl Anderson. Those should be coming. I got those coming. But they all kind of look the same in the package. They got that gloss face to them, which I'm just not sold on. So we'll see. Maybe they'll get better as they go. We still got a long ways to go. I got three more of these New Japan figures to unbox. But this one's a little bit of a rough start. Even though I like evil, I like the name, I like what he represents out here, I like the kind of spooky nature. You guys know I'm a heavy metal guy at heart. It's cool to me. But it's just uh, it leaves me wanting a little bit more, a little bit more. How about him next to Io Shirai for a little scale? Since they are apparently married or dating in real life, uh, you know, Io, she likes her evil men. And that's what he is. He's evil. So there's Io Shirai next to him. And then I guess I do have Sergeant Slaughter, the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. So you can kind of compare for height. That's probably about right. What did they say he was? Like 5'10", Sarge is like 6'4", supposedly, something like that. I think that's close enough to work for me. Uh, so you can kind of see. And these do, these will blend in with all your Mattels and your Jazzwares figures, stuff like that. So if that's what you're interested in displaying with, having crossovers with, that will work. If you're a player out there that loves to play with your figures, I'm guessing Super 7, most people don't play with Super 7 toys. But hey, if you're buying for a kid that plays... This will play just fine. It doesn't have some of the fancy pinless double jointed kind of stuff going on. Well, it is pinless, I should say. Pinless joints, I forgot to mention that. But it's not the double jointed stuff that we get with some of the Mattel and stuff like that. But I don't know if that ever stopped a kid from playing. But our final comparison, I almost forgot. We got to compare him to the most evil Super 7 figure of all time. We're talking about King Diamond, an actual Satan worshiper back in the day. A guy that had real life bones on stage as a microphone holder. Oh, Melissa, we all know that. So that's the most evil guy. So evil, you got to take a step back to the real king of evil, King Diamond, one of the all-time heavy metal greats, and another one in the Super 7 line out there. But I'd be interested to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. I know some of you guys are a much bigger New Japan fan than I am, so maybe you can shed some light on some stuff I missed. Maybe you have come at this from a different angle than I do. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Old Evil here. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did it meet your expectations? Was it better than expected? Let me know in those comments. And as a lot of us who probably have the Matt and Brian, Carl Anderson, and Doc Gallows coming very soon, I see some of the same issues with those figures that I see with these. So we'll see where it ends up shaking out. But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And stay tuned on the channel as we're going to unbox each one of these figures. The last video, whichever that one is, I'll rank the whole set in that video from my favorite to least favorite of this Wave 2 New Japan Pro Wrestling. Follow me on social media, SirPaul64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson, of course, ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. We're unboxing all kinds of stuff and a whole lot more Super 7 to come on the channel very soon. So for evil, I am Kyle. I will see you guys all real soon.